and cut. They asked for and seen. And seen. Joe. And seen. I'm gonna make it really neat and, and lovely. And it's also just not very nice. I'm really sorry about this. Oh! It's all fake. It's yeah, all fake. we actually yeah, hate, yeah, each we hate each other. <laughs> um, joking. Welcome to our channel where we bring you the latest on your favorite celebrities, films, and TV shows, and we're not afraid to get a little sassy while doing it. Before we dive into the video, we've got a fun little question about the series. In which episode was Alice Oseman spotted on screen? A, second episode. B, fifth episode. C, eighth episode. D, tenth episode. No, He's being nice to me. He told me that his first impression of me was that I had weird thumbs. He does have quite, come, let's show him to the camera. I like, they go they're in. Very, they're very like, they're very, very weird. narrow here and He's then they right. go out quite wide. Um, and I do, yeah. At the young age of 17, Alice Oseman, the talented writer behind Heartstopper, achieved a remarkable feat by signing her first publishing deal. Hailing from East Kent, she drew inspiration from her hometown for Heartstopper's setting. Alice pursued higher education at Durham University and obtained a bachelor's degree in English literature in 2016. Her literary journey began with the release of Solitaire in 2014, marking her debut novel to enter the literary world with great promise. I think maybe that's one of the th maybe that's just a reflection on me that I just look at people's hands <laughs> immediately. But I did notice the the, the funny thumbs. Um, <laughs> yeah, and sometimes I still do. I just look at whoa, you know. It's, yeah. Some big, big thumbs. I really want to get the smiley face. That yeah, that's so. Uh, oh, oh yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's really quite good. That. That's that's quite good actually. But it's not good to have a tattoo on your hand as an actor. So yeah. I have to go to somewhere else. Yeah, it would have to be somewhere a bit more sort of like private. Yeah, I think I think I would. Maybe the smiley face as well, actually. Yeah, it's a nice personal time. Where are we going, Joe? <laughs> We're going to Brick Lane because that was the first place that we hung out as a cast. It was a little bit awkward, obviously, because yeah. like the nature of like Nick and Charlie, you know, they're meant to get on very well and immediately. I mean, it did. Very interesting. <laughs> we did. We did. <laughs> yeah, we just hated each other so soon. Still no, do. So Still no. do. Yeah. I'd be like, who's that person? Like, what are they doing? That's the director, Joe. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I see. What does action mean? Yeah. Sometimes I think I think you like go to like like Waterstones or something and just no. sit by the. <laughs> Although I went to Waterstones, the I went to Waterstones yesterday to like buy a book for someone. Over ten thousand teens auditioned for roles in Heartstopper, a series that aimed for authentic representation by involving young actors. Kit Connor and Joe Locke were selected to play the main characters, Nick Nelson and Charlie Spring, respectively. The remaining cast members were announced shortly after. Heartstopper marks Joe Locke's acting debut. And then, oh, look, the Heartstopper stand. No, I'll just stand here for like half an hour and just see if. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's me, actually, yeah. yeah. I would say the first friend that I made on set was uh, the gorgeous Mr. William Gow, who is actually my husband. Congrats, yeah. by the way. Sorry, yeah. I couldn't make it. Uh, whatever. One thing I remember about this scene is. I had the t-shirt I was wearing, I'd been wearing it for the two days before on set and they, I think they must have like, it must have forgotten to be washed and because it had to like nuzzle into my shoulder. Heartstopper gained popularity online and was later adapted into a graphic novel. In 2019, Oseman was commissioned by Seesaw Films to write a screenplay based on the first two volumes of the novel. The television rights were optioned by Seesaw Films in July 2019. This adaptation aimed to showcase a positive representation of LGBT plus characters in the teen genre. I remember like, it, it smelled so bad. Oh, and then Kate yeah. thought that I just hadn't showered. It or really hadn't did. I didn't want to say it, but it did smell bad. And then bad. I was like, to costume, I was like, is this, is this t-shirt been, been washed? And they're like, oh my God, we're so sorry. And they gave me a new one. Ha <laughs> I know this one. Mark Jade. You're right, you're right. What would you say? September 25th, the one day off. Ah, oh, see, that's close, I think. That's not a good start, but there we go. I knew. I've always had a baby face, like a really, really bad baby face. Probably 14, 15. Was, that was his headshot on the wall in the yeah. makeup room. And it, apparently the whole makeup team was just like, I don't think you cast the right person. He's, yeah. just... he's showing his age now, he's got a beard. Kit Connor initially auditioned for the character of Charlie Spring, but the producers decided to cast him as Nick Nelson instead. Connor agreed that Joe Locke was better suited for the role of Charlie and auditioned for Nick instead. The production team was pleased with the chemistry between Locke and Connor. In interviews, both actors mentioned that they quickly formed a strong bond within a few hours. Uh, this isn't this isn't me trying to desperately look. Who looks good on you? 
Thank you, Joe. So this is this is he's complimenting this is really you know when Joe compliments you it like really means something means something because he doesn't do it very often. First impression of me and this is a big one. I thought you were very lovely, and very kind, and almost too nice. I was like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make fun of him. Get the bounce, get yeah, the bounce, get the bounce going. going. But then that quickly faded and the real kick when I came out. Yeah. Far less nice. My nice exterior sort of Far faded away kind. and my, no, I'm joking, my harsh. Please. You know, Maureen, oh. if you don't know this, that's so oh my disappointing. God. But I, oh, I do it! So this is wrong just from the fact that he looked at it and sort of looked horrible. Oh, that's just such an awful middle name Hello. in general. Joe Owen! No, not Owen. No, Sorry. no. Sorry. <laughs> I got really excited about that. Netflix ordered Heartstopper, a half-hour series consisting of eight episodes, on January 20th, 2021. The creators, Alice Oseman and Patrick Walters, chose Netflix for its global reach and shared values. Filming for the series lasted for three months, from April to June 2021. Netflix released teasers during the show's creation to generate excitement among younger audiences. Do you want to know my middle name? Yeah. Sebastian. Oh! I knew it was! I knew I knew it. Do you know Clearly not. William. Yeah. That, just that, that doesn't sound right. Joe. Evan does. Yeah, Yaz and Bash are the Yaz two. And Bash. Two nicest smelly smelling people. Nicest smelly people. <laughs> they are. It's a nice, a nice kind of smelly. A stinky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it from from South London quite easily, actually. It's just really tall, you know. It's tallest really building in Europe, Europe I think. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's building at least. I think there are probably like structures that are taller. I think. I don't know. You're wrong. You're wrong. New narratives from the Heartstopper universe await. Alice Oseman's debut novel, Solitaire, introduces Tori Spring, a skeptical adolescent whose path crosses with Michael, her polar opposite and eternal optimist. Notably, Tori Spring is the sibling of Charlie Spring, who takes center stage in Heartstopper. While Solitaire delves into Charlie's battle with a severe eating disorder, this particular storyline has yet to be explored in the Netflix adaptation. Uh, okay, I noticed that Google it yesterday. Oh. <laughs> it's actually the seventh. It's not actually that tall. It was, no, it was, it was never the tallest. It was never the tallest. It was, it was never the tallest. What? I've been lied to. Were we lied to? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just upsetting, really. I feel like really let down. It's really that. ruined that for us. <laughs> um, but one thing that um, we are better right. at than no. he is. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's, get the next, let's get to the next tweet, Chili please. Con carne. Chili con carne. Chili con carne. Chili con carne. <laughs> it was the most rancid thing it I've ever eaten. It was the most spicy thing <laughs> I it was, ever had. I'm just going to leave you. It was try. really this bad. This is what they do it all day, every day. Just so take the piss spicy. out of me. It was so, so... Joe came and joined us. And he, like, came in with, like, not... You know, we said like come in, you know, I guess like sweatpants. I came in sweatpants. They were some very bougie sweatpants. I don't own rugby clothes. The series aimed to authentically represent its diverse cast. They auditioned over 10,000 teenagers to ensure genuine representation. The goal was to give a voice to marginalized individuals in media and avoid inappropriate casting. Notably, the character L. Argent, a trans character, was played by Yasmin Finney, a trans woman in real life, highlighting the commitment to authentic representation. But just like sports clothes, yeah, I don't, any kind. I do now, but then I definitely didn't. They were just, he, I was, was, in my... he was looking very chic. Um, and I was like, this isn't going to go well if he's run, like about to jump in the mud. But you did quite well. Virgo. No, I'm not. You're not a Virgo. I'm a Libra. You like said... one day. Oh, okay, okay. so you would. You know what? So you're wrong. You know what? Are you a Taurus? Mm -hmm. No, not even. No. I'm a Pisces. Pisces. I did know that. We were talking about that last week. He's basically a Virgo. Basically a Virgo. So I, I win that round. I think. I think I win that round. Was the the hands the shape of your hands? <laughs> um, I don't know if maybe there is Joe wants to wrong show his hands. hands to the camera, but it's just I don't know. He's got very thick thumbs, and I don't know why, but that's the first thing I sort of um, latched so on. The first thing Kit noticed about me was he was picked up on my bad jeans. So. Real teen bedrooms and classrooms served as inspiration for the production team. They used actual photographs to create realistic teen spaces. Each space was designed to reflect the unique character of the individual. For instance, Tao's bedroom was filled with film memorabilia, while Tara had many teddy bears. It was the thick thumbs. Really, you're just offending my family. No, not at all. It was yeah. the thick thumbs, really, that just, you know, not even a bad thing. I thought you were really nice and kind. And I was focusing on your thumbs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just like a cold shower. We were both just basically. soaking. It was just cold. Yeah. Um, and then also, we were both, I think we were both nervous at trying to, like, it was the first time we'd kissed on screen and kissed in general. We hadn't kissed off screen. Mm. <laughs> but. <laughs> Jokes! You weren't Sorry! To say that. Damn! You spent more time in London recently than I have. L London just naturally calls to me. Like. 
it's the most up. dramatic thing I've ever no, heard. No, I mean, like, if you listen really carefully. To me, it just calls you know what? I sometimes. How, no, how does London call to you, Joe? You know what? It's fine, Kit. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever you say is going to really be um, nice what I say. <laughs> like a, I mean, like a brother. Honestly. I was thinking. I was thinking that. Yeah. That was my word, too. Or like partner. Like partner in crime. Yeah. So, um. Duo. Yeah. Duo. Yeah. Duo. Slight, slightly less sort of romantic or poetic, but. Olivia Coleman filmed her scenes for Heartstopper in just two days, impressing everyone involved. Director Euros Lin approached Coleman at the request of Alice Oseman, who wanted a well known actress to play Sarah, Nick's mother. Fans of the web comic and graphic novel series are thrilled with the casting choice, as Coleman brings a genuine warmth and kindness to the role. Despite the tight schedule, she managed to finish all her scenes in that short time. Sorry. Fine but yeah, we'll say brother, partner, you know, partner in brackets, in crime. Close brackets. Uh, close brackets, there you go. Um, you got it. Brackets. Yeah. Great. And we were just thinking the same thing, so clearly we're just in sync, in sync. you know? See? Sense. Thank you for watching the entire video. The answer to the question we asked at the beginning is that Alice Oseman, the author of Heartstopper, appears in the eighth episode on a train. If you found this video interesting, please like and subscribe to our channel for more great content. Stay tuned for our next video.